Uh, coming to you live from the aftermath of our playthrough of Roja, um, we just uh, wanted to say we caught a couple things that we left out that I left out of this learn yeah, this play. was your fault. Uh, it was uh, that we caught as we played, and we'll be back at the end of the video to clarify those. So stick around to the very end, and uh, it's nothing too major. Well, uh, one's pretty major. The water thing. Yeah, yeah. Significant. It's yeah, yeah. So so when we when we say we're done at the end of the video, we're not. We'll be, we'll time travel there. Fill in a couple gaps. See you then. Coming to you live from a cradle of life, this is Optimal Play. I'm Brandon. I'm Josh. And I'm Christian. And uh, Josh, actually, and Christian, but uh, you both went to Origins without me yeah. a few yes. weeks ago. Well, I invited Specifically you. Specifically without you. Oh, I invited him, <laughs> and he said, I've got better stuff to do. I heard Josh is going to be there. Yeah, that, that's true. That is that is what I said. Uh, but anyway, Josh, you brought a game back. I did. And, yes. And how are we pronouncing the name of this game? We're going to go with Roja. Roja. All right. R A U H A. Roja. Roja. A, Seems as good as any other pronunciation we came up with. A like card drafting, um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a drafting game yep. uh, about replenishing barren worlds uh, as shamans that are here to to rejuvenate these uh, these like forgotten worlds. Um, I'm here to teach you how to play so that we can play it. Excellent. Yeah. I'd love to know how to play things. <laughs> Tell me more. Uh, so this is a this. I'm, I'm so used to our, our playthroughs looking at the camera and saying, this is not a learn to play video. But uh, this one is. This one is a learn to play video. It's not going to be fancy. I'm not reading a script. We're not going to have cool B-roll. Uh, I do have two friends here who need to learn, learn how to play, and I am going to tell them, and maybe you'll find that useful. I think that's yeah. That's that's what's going on here. So, uh, Okay, so uh, Roja is played over 12 rounds. The goal at the end of 12 rounds is to have the most life energy points, which we'll track on this ring in the circle. Uh, you, you might call them victory points if you're someone who you plays, plays games. <laughs> you're... <laughs> Go on, yeah. keep explaining. I've never seen victory points before. We had a, we had a technical issue, so he's thinking of, <laughs> I'm, of no, jokes I'm, earlier I'm, inviting us I'm, <laughs> I'm refusing to tell the same joke twice. It's a policy. <laughs> fair, fair enough, fair enough. Um, Okay, so we've laid out the scoring track here to, to track those. Uh, we have these divine entities that get kind of uh, put just in any slots where they fit. Their order doesn't matter too much. We've also laid out uh, some life energy crystals, some spore tokens, and then uh, we each have kind of our personal board that is the, the tableau, that is the, uh, the world that we're trying to um, refresh and repopulate. And then we have these little mats between us with a moon, uh, between each pair of players is one of these, because it's a card drafting game, we'll be putting like hands of cards there. The uh, moon should be uh, adjacent to you on your left, and the stars should be adjacent to you on your right. Or in this case, this is mine, because we are awkwardly sitting in an L shape for this three player drafting game. Uh, we've also laid out some uh, decks of cards that I'll talk more about momentarily, and this uh, black hole, which is, as far as I know, just kind of a glorified discard pile. Um, but it's scarier. Yeah. It's it is scarier. scarier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I look at the discard pile, I'm like, oh, that's what the card's called. I look at the black hole, I'm like, ugh, I don't want to touch it. Right, right. Uh, so that's set up. Um, I mentioned you're trying to get the most uh, points after 12 rounds. We'll be tracking those 12 rounds by moving our little avatar, cute little alien-y token here, um, around this track each, uh, each round. So we'll all, ours, ours will always like, be in sync with one another. And uh, those track the 12 rounds, but they also identify the row or column that you're going to score each round, or you're going to activate, which can, do, can score some points, can gain you some currencies, can, can do a few other things. But you'll be activating everything in that row and column each round. So as you add things, you'll be wanting to think ahead to what's activating in the near future and, and so on. Um, so uh, the last thing that we need to do is for the first six rounds of the game, basically the first two sides of the board, we'll be using this tier one deck. Uh, this represents like uh, nature, forestation, mountains springing up. It's it's kind of it's it's the terrain, it's the terraforming, and then the second deck is more like um, instead of a mountain, you might be putting a mine in. Like it's it's development um, and that that kind of thing. So that's sort of the that's the the flavor they're going for with the two decks. Uh, but we're going to put four cards on each of these mats here. 
And then a little bit differently, at least from the drafting games that I've played, we're not going to be passing these around. We are going to, in round one, and there's a little uh, marker here where your avatar is. Like, I have a moon under my avatar. You actually all, all have moons. So that means go to the side with the moon facing you, and you're going to draft one card from that pile that round. The Next round, down. the cards won't move, but the you'll be looking at the sides. star side, so I'll be reaching over That's here. Fine. Yes, so, so I'm going to alternate sure. this pile and this pile. Meanwhile, I'll be Christian is alternating these yeah. two, and so on, yeah. Uh, so in each round of the game, we're going to simultaneously pick up and, and look at our options, choose one to draft, but then in uh, player order, and that uh, first player is the person with the, oh shoot, is it the most or the least? Um, I should know this. It's the person with the most points. Hmm. Person with the most points is first. I think it's a, a slight disadvantage to sure. go first here. That makes sense. Um, so uh, starting with that, you're going to decide what to do with your card, and you can do two things with it, and I'm gonna look at a couple cards here. You can place it on your board. Uh, you can, for the most part, place it anywhere, but oh, this is, this is great. We've got some examples here of, of what the cards can look like. Um, you can place them unless, or you can place them anywhere, unless this brown circle here has like a diagram of the board. That highlights where you can place it. Got it. So I realize this is probably not playing that well on camera here, but uh, it has three of the, of the nine spaces highlighted. Those are the places that this can go. Uh, this one has no cost otherwise. These two in that same brown circle have a number of uh, life energy crystals that mm -hmm. you'll have to spend mm -hmm. in order to play that. So you can draft a card no matter what, but you can only add it to your board if you can pay that cost if right. it has one. Uh, not every card it has, one, has, has one or the other of those. There are some that just have a blank brown circle there and cost nothing. Uh, I believe that's all the things that can, that can be there. Uh, then when it comes time to, uh, when it's your turn, you may place your card or you may discard it to the black hole and you can do uh, one of two things. You can either uh, gain four energy crystals or you can place a spore on one of your, your uh, other territories. Like I could put a spore here. We can cover what that spore does shortly, but that is one way to get, get the spores. Um, then after, so... Uh, we're still on, like, say Christian went first. Uh, you are going to do all of these steps that I'm explaining before I do my steps. It's, it's sim it. simultaneous selection, but then one by one playing. So you're going to uh, decide what you're doing with your card, whether you're discarding it or placing it. Then you are going to uh, potentially receive divine entities. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's a fa fancy, fancy concept. Um, these are the divine entities. They have names in the rulebook if you are so uh, interested as to, to learn their names. But um, you receive them. They come and get placed next to your board if you have created a uh, row or column of entirely their symbol. So you can see that these territories that I've put out as examples, like this uh, kind of crystal space, it has a crystal symbol here, and it has these <clears throat> three fan-looking uh, symbols. Oh, it's, that's the marine symbol. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because there's some water on here. So it's got crystals and marine life. Um, if you've created a row or column with three of that symbol, you receive that divine entity. Um, that means take it from anywhere, which means if it's in the center, I would take it from there. But if it's my turn and Christian has it, I take it from him. Sure. And then the last thing you do on your uh, on your turn is you score that column at the or column or row that the avatar is marking. Uh, you basically activate all of the territories in that say column. So the um, uh, like I, I would go down this column. You can do this in any order. Um, I would have the opportunity to spend two crystals for four life energy points. Here I would just gain a crystal. Here I would get a point for each of these, what's the name of this symbol? Flying animals, uh, animal uh, types yep. on my board. Uh, you also, at this time, you, you also activate the divine entity that you uh, received that turn if you received one. If you have other ones, they don't activate at that time. Um, and they work similarly, they, they, use, they use similar symbols to, to what they do. Um, then we'll go around, each person will do that. And uh, then the last thing that we do after we've each taken that turn is we all move simultaneously move our avatar to the next column and we repeat. We will repeat uh, three times using these same hands of cards. So like for me, I'll go to moon to my left, stars to my right, moon to my left. The remaining card will be, uh, we'll go to the black hole. We'll deal out four again and do the same thing again as we go down the right side of our board. Uh, okay. Any questions there so far? 
No, it makes sense. There's one more thing going on. Uh, when the Avatar reaches the <clears throat> corners here, so kind of after each three drafts, uh, there's another scoring round. So this is another time that we get to activate our locations. It works uh, somewhat differently. Um, at that time, you get to activate all of your divine entities that you have at that moment, and any of your territories that have spores on them. Mm. Um, so these spores are, are yeah, what, what let them activate and, and provide whether, whatever, whatever benefits they provide um, when you reach the corners here. And that's going to happen four times, including at the end of the game. Um, and that's the, the other way to activate your location. So these uh, spores, they're double-sided. The two sides of these don't mean anything. It is just so that you can uh, activate these in any order and like flip them to track sure. which ones you've activated. It's the same with these divine entities. They have like a silhouette side, so you can just track what, whether, you've, whether you've activated them. Because you might have seven things to activate. Mm, sure. It can be in any order. It's useful to have a way to track that. Makes sense. Um, so yeah, at the at the end of the game, all that matters is how many life energy points we have. There's no end game scoring for crystals or spores, anything like that. Um, any questions? Are there tiebreakers? Are there tiebreakers? Well, now you're gonna make me pick up the rule book because I don't actually know. Do you know, um, Josh? Or are you just? I actually don't know. <laughs> oh, it's one it's of these. In the case of a tie, victory is shared. Uh -huh. yeah. That's not true. I know. It's really no one. There's wins. a secret yeah. tiebreaker Everyone in my loses. heart, yeah. and I won't tell you what it is until the end of the game. <laughs> is it Christian wins ties? No. It's much more fair than that. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> This is such a, so this track goes up to 100 and then they give you tokens that you can kind of add, add to your marker for plus 100 and plus 200. So it's potentially a high enough scoring game that I sure. think, think ties are probably rare. Yeah, uh, I, I, I suspect that's words. probably true. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, well thank you for listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's, let's rejuvenate a, a lifeless husk. Let's do it, but we're going to do it in a separate video, oh, which will uh, post uh, tomorrow-ish. Sure. If you're watching this the day, the day it posted, which... Yep. You're, let's, let's Statistically you're, you're unlikely. Not. You're yeah. not. No, no one's here. Uh, no one's here watching learn to play videos the Getting minute they, fresh. the minute they go up. Yeah. Uh, you're you're here because you you searched this. I'm sure, <laughs> and, and we appreciate you. Um, but yeah, so keep an eye out for that on the channel. And one great way to know when that video goes up is to subscribe to Optimal Play. Uh, we'd also appreciate if you'd like the video. Hit the hit, hit just hit, hit all the buttons. It's it's literally the only way to support us. Yep. Uh, so we. Well, we, my Venmo uh, is easy to figure out. So if you'd like to support me, you can probably do it. Okay. So <laughs> like, subscribe, and Venmo Christian. Yeah. Any amount's fine. <laughs> Perfect. Well, with that, then <laughs> we'll sign off and we'll get to plan. Well, so great. Uh, thank you, gents. Thank you. Be optimal. As promised, we're back one more time from the aftermath of our playthrough with a couple extra clarifications. Uh, this one is small. I just wish that I had said when I taught you the game that uh, naturally you can, when you place a card on your board, you can override the cards that are already there. If you do and there's a spore there, it stays there. So, hey. Uh, the one other thing, and this is bigger, is that uh, I did leave off one step of the, uh, the scoring phase, which happens four times when the avatars reach the corners. Uh, that's where we compare water sources with one another. Uh, there's like a reference here in the center. Uh, you, the way you do it is you figure out who has the fewest water sources, and then everyone else scores some points based on how many war more water sources they have. So like quick spoiler from our playthrough, I rarely had any. So if I have zero water sources and Josh has four, he would look at the table here for four more water sources than the least, he'd get 10 points. Christian, if Christian had uh, three, he would get, uh, look at this table, get six points. Uh, you do that all four of the, the scoring phases at the corners of the board. Um, right, I think that Yeah, that I think that's it. it. I think yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, Water's important. It turns out, yeah, watch our playthrough to see how important. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> all right, thanks for joining us. 